What's up guys, doing a music collection update, going to break this up over a couple videos, uh, I'll do like two or three probably CDs and one or two, well, probably just one of cassettes and vinyls and maybe even a hardware update because I got some pretty cool hardware um, that I'm pretty excited about, but that'll be kind of based on if there's um, interest or not. So. Never been a big CD guy, always been kind of more analog, vinyl, cassettes, etc. But um, kind of been getting into CD collecting. A lot of CDs are really cheap, especially compared to their vinyl counterparts. And um, listen to them in the car a lot on my commute. So I've been getting uh, into building up my CD collection. For CDs, though, I'm not really willing to take uh, many gambles. I'm kind of just getting sure things, things I know I like, already have on other forms of media or whatever the case may be. So let's just get right into this. First we have Obituary Slowly Re-Rot, um, Death Metal from Florida. This is my favorite album by them. I uh, picked this up in the early 90s when I was a kid. Loved it. Still have my copy, but it is trashed. It skips. The cover's all ripped up and broken. So I wanted to replace it. The price on this is actually going up, um, which is kind of crazy considering, like, I don't know, I remember seeing this CD all the time at used music stores when I was a teenager. But, um, happy to have it back. My favorite obituary uh, record, hands down. Next, one of my favorite bands of all time and my favorite uh, album by them, and that is Poison Idea War All the Time. I already have this on cassette and vinyl, but wanted to pick up a CD copy. This was really cheap, like five bucks shipped on eBay. Definitely not their best record, but it is my favorite record by them, but I, you know, it's obviously not their best. I just have a lot of nostalgia for it. It was the first Poison Idea album I'd ever heard, and I absolutely love it. Um, definitely, definitely cool to get this on a CD, though I don't really like the uh, cover art on this. A uh, pretty cool release here by a band called Coil. This is called Love Secret Domain. Coil is kind of a super group of um, electronic and uh, industrial experimental musicians. Love Secret Domain, I don't think, is their best effort, in my opinion. But again, this is one I used to have um, as a teenager and wanted to replace it. I was absolutely appalled by the prices on this thing. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to find a seller who had this listed on eBay for 50 bucks, but it didn't sell, so they reposted it at 22 shipped, so I jumped on that, because that's way under cost, but happy to get this, uh, despite it not even being close to my favorite Coil album, I am going for a uh, complete Coil discography on CD, so it was nice to kind of get one of the more expensive ones out of the way, though like I said, it isn't my favorite release by them, and probably not a really good place to start, if you're interested. Some black metal here. We have uh, Beharit, Drawing Down the Moon. Um, I already have this on vinyl again, but this is my favorite Beharit record. Easily, no contest in my opinion. Awesome, awesome release. Though I do feel the mastering on the CD version is a little bit flat sounding, a little thin, um, and a little bit low in my opinion. Still a great release, but sounds so much better on vinyl. Another black metal record, uh... Mortifera, not even going to attempt to pronounce the uh, name of the album. Really good French black metal. Um, this is my favorite Mortifera record, and easily one of my favorite black metal records of all time. It has the um, song La Revenant, and um, the first song, which is kind of an instrumental like introduction into that song. Those two songs, like back to back, are like, just some of my favorite black metal ever written. They sound so good together, it's almost like they should be one song, but absolutely love this record. Um, can't say enough good things about it. If you're kind of like thinking about getting into black metal and you don't want to like listen to like hipster, like US black metal garbage, uh, like fucking Death Heaven and all that fucking crap, um, I urge you to check out uh, Mortifera. Definitely a good place to start if you're thinking about getting into uh, black metal, although the vocals can be a turn off for some people, they are pretty abrasive. Uh, let's see here, get this shit out of the way, um, bear with me for just a moment, 
got a whole bunch of skinny puppy records. One, two, three, four, five. So there's two more somewhere. I got a lot of seven skinny puppy uh, albums off eBay for 17 bucks shipped, which was a fantastic deal. So I'll be showing the other two. I believe they're in my car right now. Uh, skinny puppy albums in another video. But uh, here's some of them I got. I got um, The Process, which is uh, fantastic. Skinny Puppy, of course, a, uh industrial band that had some success in the 90s. Um, not, I'm not a huge fan of industrial, but Skinny Puppy I think is really cool and dark, and uh, I, I do like them quite a bit, so I'm going for a complete uh, Skinny Puppy discography on CD because I've never really collected um, their vinyls because they're stupid expensive. Uh, I do have some of their cassettes, but I think uh, CD would be the best place to go for uh, Skinny Puppy releases. Next, um, probably my second or third favorite Skinny Puppy album, uh, Last Rites. Really, really good. Um, the, the master on this is actually, I think, really good. Some Skinny Puppy fans uh, complain about the CD version of this, but I think it sounds fantastic. Next, we have uh, Bites and Vermission. Their uh, first two albums kind of combined onto one CD, which makes sense because they are pretty similar um, in tone and um, just in general. So they kind of make sense to have on one package. It'd be cool to get them uh, separately, but this is just the, uh, the disc that came with the bundle. We have Back and Forth Series 2. Uh, the Back and Forth Series is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, this not being my personal favorite of the Skinny Puppy Back and Forth series, but uh, still pretty good. And uh, probably my favorite um, Skinny Puppy out of this lot of Skinny Puppy CDs, and that is the Perpetual Intercourse. Very good album. Very cold. It's very confusing and evil. Uh, I like it a lot kind of totally shifting gears into a genre I never talk about because I'm not a fan of at all. Uh, grunge, I use the term loosely. Uh, the only grunge band that I am a fan of, even though I don't really consider them a grunge band, is Tad, and this is their record, Inhaler. I've always loved this. I've always thought Tad was a really cool band, and um, this kind of being their big CD. Uh, really, really happy to find this. I actually found this at a used music store. Uh, for a couple bucks. This is my, I don't know, probably my second or third copy of this CD. I've had so many over the years. I've misplaced them and given them to people. So uh, nice to get this back um, because I do have a loose copy around somewhere, but I was happy to find that for sure. Oh, let's see. Man, it never ends. Uh, another CD I've bought in four or five times now, and that is Ween's The Pod. Uh, this is my favorite Ween album no question. Uh, great, great record. Uh, this is one where I have the vinyl uh, and the cassette already, but my CD version of this like skipped like crazy, so uh, cool to uh, to get this. Um, I listened to it a few times already in the car, and it's just as good as I remember. I can't say enough good things about this record. Um, yeah, Ween the Pod, definitely check this band out. It doesn't matter what type of music you're into, you'll probably find some Ween songs that you like. Okay, Tangerine Dream. Uh, we have the score for the film The Sorcerer. Lucked out on this. Found a really, really good price on eBay for this. Uh, this is one I've had my eye on for a while. Just been waiting for a decent price on this. Very, very good score. Never seen the movie. Love the soundtrack. Uh, huge Tangerine Dream fan. You'll probably be seeing more Tangerine Dream um, albums in future updates. Got Nurse with Wound. Um, this is like a grail CD for me. Uh, I'd love to have this on vinyl, but it's so expensive, so it's just really nice to find a decent CD copy, decently priced. Did pay a good bit for it, but um, definitely not too much, which is good, because I wasn't trying to spend a fortune on this CD. Um, this is, of course, Chance Meeting on a Dissecting Table of a Sewing Machine and an Umbrella. Um, pretty stupid title, but absolutely love this album. 
Um, I, I don't know if it's my favorite Nurse of the Wound album, but it's definitely one of the coolest in my opinion. Very pleasing aesthetically as well. Some really cool uh, artwork on this thing that has gone on to be kind of um, staples of Nurse with Wound imagery, especially this picture uh, right here. So yeah, really cool to get that. Really, really happy about that one. Um, another one that I'm really happy about is Misery Index by Assuck. Uh, this is a CD. Again, I already have a copy of this, but my copy is beat to shreds. I've had this CD since I was a teenager, so I wanted to replace it. Went to replace it. Could not believe the prices on this CD. I almost fainted. Uh, because I remember buying this CD at a show for like five bucks when I was a teenager. So to see the prices on this thing now, I almost had a fucking heart attack. Uh, but I finally found a seller who was willing to sell this for a decent price. Nice mint copy to replace my old beat up, scratched one that I had forever. So definitely going to take better care of uh, this one and hopefully never have to replace it again. Next is a band I kind of wanted to uh, get into. Um, I actually bundled this together with the uh, Ass Suck CD from a uh, eBay seller because um, he had some other stuff, and he said, you know, take a look at my other stuff. We'll give you free shipping, and we worked out a price for a couple different items. And this was one that he, got, he sold me for just a couple bucks. Uh, it caught my attention just because I've always wanted to check this band out, but I never really knew where to start, and that is uh, Ruins which is a Japanese kind of noisy, hardcore punk band. I don't even know if you'd call them hardcore. Just like a noisy Japanese band that plays, I don't know, punk music, I guess, or some form of hardcore. They're hard hard to explain. Um, the reason that I wanted to get this record in particular is because this is kind of a collection of all the releases from 1986 to 1992 so eps and seven inches and stuff like that so i figured this was a really good place to start because it has the early stuff in their discography and kind of a collection of some cool stuff um this was put out by skin graft records who tends to release some pretty interesting stuff so yeah really happy to get this listen to it absolutely loved it thought it was uh phenomenal so definitely made me a fan of the band and I'm um, looking to get some more of their albums because these guys are really, really cool. They have a very interesting sound and even an aesthetic quality to them. Um, all their records are really cool looking, not just sounding. Um, so I've, you know, immediately wanted to expand my horizons and knowledge about uh, the band Ruins after hearing this. Um, so yeah, for late 80s, early 90s kind of Japanese like noise core stuff, pretty pretty cool and very progressive so pleased with that um next we have naked city uh grand uh gungal or something i'm not sure how to pronounce this naked city is another really cool kind of i don't know noise jazz punk band uh from new york city uh, of course led by uh john zorn on um alto saxophone but this is i believe their first two records um yeah that's right right their first two records combined uh really really good stuff all the naked city releases are awesome i was actually at one of my friend's house and he was playing some uh naked city stuff and i was like man i forgot how fucking cool uh naked city is and made me want to get uh some of their stuff so picked this up, and then I was listening to some of the other John Zorn stuff, and then I kind of went down a rabbit hole, so to speak, and uh, went ahead and picked up Painkiller's um, Guts of a Virgin. And Painkiller is John Zorn on alto sax, um, Bill Laswell, who's one of my favorite bass players of all time, kind of like a weirdo reggae-ish reggae influence style uh, bass player um, has some really really unique stuff I'm, I'm a big fan of Bill as well and of course uh, Mick Harris on drums Mick Harris being uh, the original drummer from Napalm Death you know another one of my favorite bands 
and to just even mention like napalm death and alto saxophone like in the same breath is just fucking crazy but john zorn doesn't play alto saxophone like in the way that you normally think of an of an alto saxophone and uh man this is so fucking good this wow uh painkiller is, is unreal man this shit is fucking awesome um I loved it, listening to this thing, like, back to back to back to back, and just, it's a super group for sure, um, it's like Bill Laswell is, you know, like, the John Stockton of the group, just fucking serving up, um, assists to, uh, you know, to Mick Harris and John Zorn to make them, like, really shine, like, Mick Harris's drumming on this is fucking awesome, and even Zorn's uh, alto sax playing, which I typically fucking hate saxophones, is phenomenal. Um, don't really know how to classify this band. I'd say it's kind of a fusion of jazz, hardcore, ambient, experimental, just all over the map. You know, not afraid to play any s certain type of thing. Um, really cool. And then, so this led me to picking up... Um, Shit, what is this called? Buried Secrets, uh, another painkiller record. Um, this one, of course, featuring like Justin Broderick of um, Godflesh on vocals and I think some production. And this album, again, is phenomenal. I listen to this back to back to back. So I picked these up and I was like, fuck it, I might as well just get the complete recordings. Um, I was kind of being cheap because this record you can get for, you know, a couple bucks. This one's out of print, but it's still pretty cheap. So I grabbed both of these, you know, thinking this will just scratch my itch. But then I had to go and pull the trigger on the uh, complete recordings, uh, the four disc set of um, all the painkiller stuff. So, of course, it it includes these, but it also has a, a bunch of other stuff, and I've been listening to this uh, almost exclusively for the past four or five days, and it's fucking awesome. Can't say enough good things about it, so I guess that's where I'll leave off this video uh, with, for me, the highlight of this whole stack, the, uh, the Painkiller Complete Collections. This has some live stuff, all their um, studio stuff some kind of outtake type stuff, some ambient stuff, some well, more ambient stuff. Awesome. Highly, highly, highly recommended if you're a fan of any of those guys. Uh, or if you're a fan of Godflesh, I would say definitely check this out because Justin, Justin Broderick's influence is definitely, um, you can hear it in a lot of the music, not just the stuff that he's on, even as weird as that is. It kind of always, there's always like this little like, underlying god flesh influence in my opinion but um really uh for me bill laswell is what holds this thing together his bass playing is just fucking phenomenal and uh mick harris's drumming is just just ridiculous so so fucking good um there is vocals but they're not traditional vocals um in fact you might not even notice that there's vocals but uh, I think all the guys pretty much do vocals to some degree, though, like I said, they're not traditional vocals. Um, but, yeah, highly recommended. Definitely check it out. Uh, if you're into any of those guys, uh, you'll probably be into this. So that, that'll that be uh, where I leave this off, part one of my uh, music collection update. I hope I didn't bore you guys to tears. And uh, if you're fans of any of these bands, let me know. Um, if you're going to go out and listen to any of these bands now after seeing this, by all means, let me know and let me know uh, what you think. Um, so that'll be it for this one, and um, I'll do another one soon.